All right, so another install. Uh, what I'm doing now is the um, radiator shroud cover in black. Um, it's really nice because they provide different options if you have an aftermarket intake or the OEM intake. Um, I have the Cobb SF intake, which uses the OEM snorkel. Uh, so I'll be using the stock uh, shroud piece um, because, of, because of this. If you had an aftermarket intake where this wasn't being used, there's a different piece on this side that you can um, use so it fills it in. Uh, but I kind of went over everything really quickly just to uh, familiarize myself with it uh, to make sure, um, you know, I'm not fumbling through this video because there's a lot more steps that are involved with this one as opposed to anything else. Just screwing something on. There's a couple things you need to do here. Uh, the first, well, one of the things you need to do is you need to remove the, um, the radiator cap. You want to make sure that the car has been sitting for at least two hours. Uh, you obviously don't want to take that off if um, the car is hot because it'll be a big, big mess. Um, so what you want to do is wait for it to cool. Um, I haven't driven in about six hours now, probably more than that. So um, the car is totally fine to work on. Uh, next thing you want to do is actually move this, um, pop this uh, coolant overflow uh, tank right here. It's very simple. You just take a, there's a little tab right here. And um, I already did it because I wanted to make sure I don't break anything. So I just popped it in here and I pried it off and it popped out. So that was the next step. And one of the other things you have to do is this clamp right here for the radiator hose. Um, the clamp is kind of, the top here is pointed this way. What you want to do is have this clamp facing straight up. I guess because the, the uh, shroud won't fit correctly if that's not there. Um, so I already did that just to make sure Nothing bad happened, obviously, because you're you're removing the clamp. So, you know, God forbid if if something happened and coolant went everywhere, you'd kind of be uh, in a much bigger predicament. But um, it's very easy. I just use the large pliers. I use whoops. I use some. I use these. I just popped it, and there's a little locking tab. Um, so you just kind of pop that lock, twist it, and then uh, make sure you lock it back into place. Because if you don't. This, has, this could pop off and it could um, kind of ruin your day. Um, so the next thing they want you to do, whoops. Actually, the first thing they want you to do is actually remove this rubber seal up top uh, on the hood. Um, there's a seal here that you need to take off. So that after you do that, um, you can kind of move forward. But this kind of just pops off. Sorry, the angle's not there, but sure you are in doing it um you just want to pop this off there's little little pins right there that just come out with it uh, make sure they all come out with it too so um that you can put to the side because you won't be needing it anymore um using metal blah, blah, blah. okay so the next thing um you want to do is there's you want to remove all these bolts and tabs here there's three pop clips so i'm going to go ahead and remove those quick. So one, two, and three. I hate pop clips. These things always break. I mean, these didn't break, but I have a whole box of them. So if they do break, it's not a big deal. Um, and then the next thing they want you to do is to Remove these one, two, three, four, five, six um, bolts here. So let me do that quickly. It'd be much easier if I was using a screwdriver. And I want you to take this off, put that aside. All right, so I got a little bit ahead. Um, I just kind of wanted to make sure I, what I was doing was correct. Um, so it got a little confusing and you just wanted to make sure, you know, you're dealing with coolant cap and everything and the hose and all that. So I kind of just wanted to make sure that um, everything was lining up right and, uh, you know, I didn't make any mistakes. So basically uh, what I did is I removed all those bolts. I took that, um, that seal off right here. And then there's two 10 millimeter bolts here that holds the uh, radiator fan shrouds. Um, so you just want to loosen them a little bit so the tabs of the uh, of this shroud can slide in. Um, so I, I, I did that 
And now I'm gonna tighten them back up. So it holds this into place. You don't want to do too tight because they are plastic. So um, just make sure that you don't go too crazy. Um, and then you can pop this coolant uh, overflow tank back in. Because um, basically, there's this, all these little, uh, it, um, I don't want to say indents, but these little grooves right here, they slide into all the the bolts here for the the seal right right there so everything kind of um seals in or uh tightens up to against it so it's that's a really nice fitment um you just want to lift up the bumper and slide them in and then uh all the holes will line up <clears throat> so next part is uh let's see i got all that stuff in if you have an aftermarket intake too you want to you gotta uh, move all four of the radiator shroud uh, screws, but like I said, since I have the uh, OEM snorkel, I only have to loosen these two because this one doesn't utilize these bolts right here. Um, so this one literally just slides between the chassis and the bumper, and then you line it up with that hole. And um, then to attach that, you have these little little screws and bolts. Um, I only need one with the aftermarket one. You'll need. Uh, I believe three. Yeah, it's one, then two, and three. But since uh, I'm using the OEM snorkel, I don't. I don't need to install one. So let's get this threaded on. It's pretty small, so I guess it's an eight millimeter. Yeah, it looks like it. So tighten that up. The thing about it, I really like about all this stuff is when you install it, it's so like sturdy. Like this thing is like doesn't even move. Um, I mean, just read it. It's not. I didn't even put in the clips. I put. I just tightened the two bolts back here. And the thing was even freaking. And this is. I'm. <laughs> I can't even put my words together. Um, but yeah, it's, it just seems so stout and and really uh, well. You know, like every all the holes and everything line up. Um, I don't know. It's just, I'm really happy with that. I really like that. A lot of stuff you use aftermarket. It doesn't really bolt up right. And it's kind of a little wobbly and doesn't fit right. But um, this pair of stuff is really, I'm really impressed with it. It's, I like how it's over-engineered and I really like that stuff. Um, <clears throat> okay. So I got everything installed uh, in terms, uh, in regards to the shroud. Um, so what I want to do next is kind of just go back in reverse order, put all this stuff back in. Um, so I'm going to start with the bolts here, just get them started, and then I'll go and tighten them all up. Last thing is put the snorkel back on. Okay, so... After some trial and error, I realized you have to put the snorkel on first before you put this piece on, um, because the the, um, the pins where the, the snorkel hooks into the, the frame or is underneath this. I don't know why I was not thinking well before I did that. Um, but the cool thing is they have this nice rubber seal here, which creates a really good seal. So it kind of forces air, air in there. So I feel like it's actually a little bit better uh, some foam oh, I get it so then you can put some foam there okay things are starting to make sense now <laughs> the the instructions are okay um, I mean it'll get you through it but there's some pictures of a few things that uh, are not necessarily you know, they don't explain it that well there's foam over here that is included with the with the shroud um, there's here let me get the camera um, <clears throat> There's a little gap right here that you can put the foam in to kind of seal it in so um, you know the the air doesn't escape anywhere else and it goes straight into the intake so I'm basically just going to cut this to size 
and uh, shove it in there and stick it. So, <laughs> um, so it kind of just seals it off. It gives it more uh, flow, and there's it's kind of cool. It creates a little like air dam um, as opposed to you know nothing there where it you know that the air can kind of go up and just escape. So, I obviously I don't think I'm going to feel a difference, um, but it should be interesting to see if. Uh, you know, the air, the air field ratio changes or anything, which I don't think it will, but um, I don't know. We'll see. But uh, let me let me cut this foam to size and get it in there, and uh, and then I'll get back to you. All right, so I got a piece of foam to fit. Um, you know, it's not perfect fit, obviously, but it's pretty close. Um, and that kind of, what that does, it seals that off, so it gives it a, so the air flows right into the, the snorkel as opposed to coming out here. Um, I mean, it's, it's the best I can do besides shoving it in there. Uh, it was probably best to do this when it was off the car, but like I said, the instructions didn't really tell you anything about it. So um, I kind of just had to improvise and I didn't feel like taking it back off. So, you know, it's definitely on there. It's stuck. It's not going anywhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's the install of the shroud. Uh, I was a little bit more involved than I thought. I don't know why. I wasn't really thinking about it. Um, but But now that it's installed, I'm really happy. NJ Bay looks pretty cool. Um, like I, I mean, all the past videos, you saw everything, but I'll go over it real quick. Uh, I did the strut bar. This is what I did all tonight. I did the strut bar. I did the uh, oil cap, the battery tie down, uh, the boost control sol solenoid cover, um, the alternator belt cover, and uh, the shroud, the radiator shroud right here. Uh, I still have... Um, the end links to do, the rear end links, and I'm waiting on the rear 25 millimeter sway bar to come in. Um, I'll do a whole separate video on that. Um, and I can I can do a do yourself or kind of like walking you through the install uh, if anybody's interested in that or they just kind of want to see me just talk as I'm doing it. I don't know. I haven't really decided yet, but I'll see what I'm up for when the time comes. But for right now, um, doesn't really look like much, but if you look at the before, it looks a lot a lot less, uh, I guess, dressed up. Uh, now it looks a lot cleaner. I'm really, really happy I went with the black. The green would have been too much for me. Uh, I do still think it looks good, so if you do want the green or you have green already, um, kudos to you. I think it looks cool. I'm just not that uh, that brave to go that 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 loud. Um, but uh, but yeah, uh, I'm really happy with the black. Uh, it really ties it in. It kind of goes with the theme of my car. Um, you know, I got the black side markers there and the black brakes and uh it just looks really clean so i'm happy i did all that uh huge thanks to perrin for for um helping me out and getting me this stuff uh, not to mention they got it to me really quickly uh, i dealt with thomas powers he was an awesome guy he responded to all my emails really quickly um he understood you know what i what i was trying to accomplish here and um he definitely helped me out so big thanks to thomas uh, huge thanks to Perrin for, for hooking up the parts. I think the engine bay looks way better. Um, not to mention the uh, Intertech Fabrications inner card, uh, or inner card, um, inner cooler guard. Uh, kind of makes it uh, complete, uh, especially with the white SCI logo. I think it looks awesome. Um, so I'm really happy with everything. And uh, if you guys have any questions about uh, this, the what I did the video on, the shroud here, or any part for that matter, just you know, don't be afraid to ask me in the comments below. Uh, I tend to watch those things like a hawk. Uh, I'm always interested in people's feedback and, um, you know, what they think and if they have any questions. Like, you know, I enjoy doing this stuff. So if people have questions, uh, I like to help you, you guys out and, um, you know, just ask me whatever you want. I'll, I'll answer it pretty quickly. So, uh, but yeah, that's it for tonight. And um, I'll be sure to update you guys on, um, you know, what I think of the strut bar up front and how everything is holding up. Um, but that'll be down the line. I want to make sure I get some time, uh, you know, seat time behind everything to make sure everything is, uh, you know, tightened and, and performing uh, well and, you know, nothing happens or anything like that. Uh, like I said, I'll have another video for the uh, end links that I got over here and the rear sway bar. Um, and then I'll kind of do a whole comprehensive, comprehensive review of all the parent parts I installed on the car. But yeah, that's it for now, and um, I'll catch you guys in the next video, and uh, thanks for watching.